Well, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back with you tonight, uh, to be able to bring God's Word to you from here in Macrofelt, to you good folk in Portadown Baptist, and I trust uh, the Word of God was a blessing to you this morning. And tonight we turn again to God's Word uh, in the look for hope, in the search for hope in difficult days. I'd like you to take your Bibles and please turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. I'll begin to read at verse 11. Uh, through to the end of verse 16. The word of God reads, See, with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for this beautiful reading of your word. And we pray that at this point that you will help us to grasp its, its great truths concerning your son. That we would bring him glory in our lives. I pray for the folk in Portadown that Lord you'll bless them tonight. As they're in their homes that oh Father they would be encouraged by your word and strengthened. So be near to us all we ask in these days for Jesus sake. Amen. It's verse 14 that I want to particularly draw your attention to this evening. What we read there is, But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. You know, the idea of boasting is one that we're all familiar with. We use phrases like know it all when we talk of people who boast he knows it all or he thinks he knows it all. We talk of people who are full of themselves or people who are narcissistic who think the world revolves around them and they only like to live to tell us all how much that is the case. We're all familiar with such people and if we're honest we all struggle with such tendencies. We all struggle with boasting. We boast about our possessions. We boast about our popularity. We boast about our position, our power, our prestige. We boast about our families. We boast about our fame, our fortunes, our lack of fortunes. And we, and all of these things just in the cable we value in life. We all struggle with such things. Our world struggles with it. And Christians are not immune to such temptations. But this tendency to boast much of which is based upon a competition that exists in our world between people. Well, this great competition that we're all influenced by and involved in to some degree or another has come to one very, very quick halt. Because all that we boast in, all that we naturally boast in as citizens of this world, is now suddenly in jeopardy. All that we brag about, is now under threat. How are we to respond as those whose livelihoods are in jeopardy? As those whose families are in jeopardy? How are we to respond? We're now forced to reevaluate our values and our priorities in life, in, in life. And this is one good thing that has come out of COVID-19. That we can actually self-reflect and focus on what is important in life. We can't boast about the things that we tend to boast about. And Proverbs reminds us of this in Proverbs 27 verse 1. But do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring. We can't boast about tomorrow any longer. All too often we wander through life thinking we are invincible. But we have very suddenly been brought to a place where we all realise that that is not the case. 
Now this is very much sinking in with most people. There are some out there that seem to be taking longer than others for that to be sinking in with. But in the midst of it all, can the Bible help? Well, the answer to that question is yes. Because the Galatian church that we've just been reading about, the Galatian church, while not facing the coronavirus, was no stranger to boasting. There were people infiltrating this fellowship that were very much caught up in the whole concept of boasting. And again, we are very familiar with that ourselves. See, pride had infiltrated this church, as it has our world, and Paul helps them to reorientate their lives. And as Paul does that for the Galatian church, it is good for us to do it today. For we find ourselves in a position whereby we need to reorientate our lives. For we have all, to some degree or another, been caught up in boasting in all the wrong things. So Paul encourages us to boast, but he encourages us to do it properly. He encourages us to do it Christianly, if you like. And the first thing that he does is he highlights a very important principle. He says in verse 14, but far be it from me to boast. Now what's he referring to here? Well, the principle that he's highlighting is that he shouldn't be boasting in himself. He goes on to talk about the cross. We'll get to that in just a moment. But he says, far be it from me to boast. To boast in what? To boast in self. And Paul was a man who could have boasted in himself so far as all of his contemporaries were concerned. He was, well, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was described in Philippians chapter 3 as a a zealous follower of the law. Ephesians chapter 2 describes him as being part of the commonwealth of Israel. He was circumcised, a member of God's Old Testament elect that had come through. He was a Jew, the people of God, been given the law. And all the privileges of knowing God's Old Testament word. But Paul doesn't use any of that culture as a means for bragging. He doesn't boast in his background, his upbringing. No, he realises that there's only two types of people in the world. There are saved and there are lost. And all people need the grace of God. And so Paul being from Israel, being part of God's commonwealth, being part of the elect of the Old Testament, God still needed to save him. Paul understood this. Paul could have boasted also in his character. In contrast to the false teachers who did boast in all that they knew, and they also boasted in their background, because circumcision is a huge issue going on here with regards to these who are infiltrating the church. These false teachers thought that well, their, their, their godly character was something that they should glory in. But yet the Apostle Paul, with all of his wisdom, with all of his gifts of speaking, preaching, writing, Paul still has a humility about him that the false teachers infiltrating this church didn't have. Paul called himself in Ephesians chapter 3 the very least of all the saints. You see, Paul understood That while character may impress others, it doesn't save you from your sins. And so his culture didn't save him. His his character didn't save him, nor did his conduct. So the Apostle Paul was a man who worked very, very hard for the sake of the gospel. In fact, it could be argued that no one worked as hard as the Apostle Paul when it came to the establishing of the New Testament church. But he realised that service, even service to Christ, does not save. In fact, Paul calls himself a a better servant than all the apostles because of the imprisonments, because of the beatings and the near-death experiences that he had. But none of such service, none of such sacrificial giving of his life, time and energy resulted in his salvation. And so he wouldn't boast in himself. This is the principle that he establishes at the very beginning of this verse. But yet there are so many people in our world and they're just like Nebuchadnezzar of old. Remember Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4, the great, the great leader and ruler of Babylon. He looked over the city of Babylon and thought about this great city that I had built, he talked about. And well, the very next day God humbled him. And he was on his hands and knees eating grass like a wild donkey. 
because God brought him to nothing. See, Nebuchadnezzar had no cause for boasting. Paul had no cause for boasting. And if Paul had no cause for boasting in his culture, in his character, in his conduct, then what cause have you or I in boasting in ourselves? If Paul couldn't trust in himself, how can we? And so what this highlights is that our church membership, our church attendance, our observance of baptism and the Lord's Supper, as important as all those things are, and, and in the right context, such things are very, very important. But such things don't see it. Such things don't bring you into a right relationship with God. And so we shouldn't boast in self. You know, John Bunyan the writer of the Pilgrim's Progress wrote these words. He that is down needs fear no fall. He that is low no pride. He that is humble ever shall have God to be his guide. You see God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And the Apostle Paul understood this. And he understood that there's two types of people in the world. And those two types of people are summed up in the parable described in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through to 14. We have the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. For the Pharisee stood and prayed and he said, Lord, I thank God, I thank you that, that I'm not like other men, like extortioners, like unjust, like adulterers, or even like this tax collector standing next to me. But the tax collector, he wouldn't even lift his eyes up to heaven. And all he did was beat upon his breast and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And this highlights the point that Paul is making. The point that Paul is making is that none of us should boast in self. Not our backgrounds, not our behaviour, not the things that we've done, the things that we are in the eyes of other people. We shouldn't boast in any of those things. We should simply boast in Christ. And that's what leads us on to the second point. See, having made this principle, highlighted this principle, he then highlights a practice. He says, but far be it from me that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here you have Paul's declaration. His declaration is that he boasted in Christ crucified for his salvation. The cross, the atonement, the covering of sin, the substitutionary sacrifice when Jesus Christ took Paul's place on the cross. That was the apostle's resting place. He talked about this earlier in this epistle. In chapter 2 he said, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now the cross, sometimes when we talk about a cross... We talk about it in different terms. And in the Bible it's referred to in different terms as well. The cross is sometimes referred to as a, as a piece of wood upon which that physical act of crucifixion can take place upon. Philippians chapter 2 is an example of this. When, when Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. It's referring to a literal piece of wood where Christ was, was impelled upon. And then in Matthew chapter 16, 24, it talks about if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow after me. And the idea there is, is suffering and persecution and following after Christ at all costs. But then there's this different way and different sense in which the cross is being referred to in Galatians 6. Where the cross is referred to as that salvation experience. That it's through the cross we are saved. And that's the terms in which it's used in places like 1 Corinthians chapter 1. When the cross is described by some as foolishness. It's referring to the doctrine of the cross. The doctrine of salvation. And that's what Paul's referring to here in Galatians chapter 6. And this doctrine of the cross. This was Paul's message. This was what he lived for. This is what he wrote about. And this is what he was determined to teach others. 
And the questions that automatically come to us then at this point is, well, what is the message of our lives? What do we live for? If someone was to write about us, or if we were to write a book about our own lives, what would we include? What would be the theme of that book, of that writing? Well, for the Apostle Paul, it would obviously be the cross, because he boasted of nothing else. But, but what about you? What about me? See, the answer for the genuine Christian should be Christ crucified. For Christ crucified is the central theme of the Bible. Right from the very beginning, right to the very end, the theme that runs right through, that holds everything together, is the crucified Christ. Right from Adam and Eve at the very beginning, when God sacrificed animals and gave them a covering to cover up their shame and nakedness. To the Passover lamb, when the death angel passed over Egypt and all the Israelites were saved by the shedding of the blood that was upon their doorposts. To the temple, to the tabernacle, to all that came right through the Old Testament that is revealed there in Christ in the New. Everything points to Christ our Messiah, the crucified one. And without that cross, without the cross of Christ, the Bible is a very hopeless and a very dark book. And now perhaps you're familiar with it. Perhaps you're tuning in here today and you don't know Christ as your saviour, but yet when you're familiar with the Bible, In fact, you even enjoy reading it and you enjoy listening to sermons like this. You're familiar with the Lord Jesus Christ, but only in an intellectual sense. You're yet to allow that intellectual knowledge to penetrate your heart. Well, that requires the power of the Holy Spirit. And my hope today is that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that God's truth will make that journey from your head to your heart. You see, it is through the cross and through the cross alone that you and I can reach heaven. And there heaven is described in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, for example, as the place where the lamb that has been slain is worshipped and from whom radiates the glory of God. The point being that no one nor nothing is as important as him the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so he is more than a mere figure from history. And you may tonight know about his virgin birth, and you may accept that intellectually. You may know about his miracles, his teaching, his good deeds, how he went around delivering all who were oppressed of the devil, all of which ultimately led to his cross. You may know all those things intellectually. But you need to know him by supernatural experience. You need to have more than a mere cerebral assent to such things. You need to strive to be like the Apostle Paul. You must boast. You must glory. You must place all your confidence in the cross for your salvation. You must recognise that Christ and Christ alone is your only hope of salvation. This is what Paul understood. And this is why Paul boasted in nothing save the cross. So he has this principle. He doesn't boast in himself. He has this practice of boasting in Christ, the Saviour, and no one else. And then thirdly, he highlights the power. He says, read with me again, but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. You see, for the Apostle Paul, the cross of Jesus Christ, that act of sacrifice that brought about Paul's salvation experience is the power of is the instrument through which God, through which sorry, Paul's relationship with the world has been severed. Paul is effectively saying here that he is dead to the world and the world to him. In other words, what he's saying is the world has no value for him. And so he's been transformed. He's become a person who has gone from valuing the world to now not valuing the world. He now values eternity because he values Christ. 
So the world, which refers not so much to a place as in the world in which we live, but a mode of life that's found in unbelievers, a system rather than a place, a system of practice. Paul forsakes all this. He counts it all as rubbish that he might know Christ. This is the power of the cross in his life. And what this means practically is that he's walking with God. He's walking by faith. He's bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And he's living in freedom. Freedom from this world. He has a different value system. He no longer regards the world as his home. But heaven is his home. Is his home. And when heaven is your home, you have a completely new perspective on what is going on here on earth. And while this world is being plummeted into chaos and seems to be spiralling out of control because of COVID-19, the Christian, like Paul, can say with assurance in their hearts, like the psalmist in Psalm 63, your steadfast love is better than life. No matter what happens in this world, his love is better than life. We can also say with the Apostle Paul when writing to the Philippians that to depart and to be with Christ is far better. Do you believe that, Christian? Oh, we profess such things. We say we believe them. All of our theology is all prim and proper. But when it comes to times like this, when we are faced with an enemy called COVID-19 that literally could take our lives from us, do we believe what the Apostle says? That to depart and go and be with Christ is far better? This is what Paul believed. And why did he believe it? Because of the power of the cross at work in his life. And this is the strength of the church. This is the secret to strength within the church. It is a sustained focus upon the cross of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. This is the secret to us maintaining focus and in the days that are ahead. The cross. This is where our attention must be if we are to see this situation through. This is the secret. Of the church. The cross. It is the secret of our mission. Going into all the world and making disciples. And I realise that in these circumstances that missions is. We're going to have to rethink exactly how we go about reaching our neighbours and reaching our world. But we must always do it. In and through the cross. For through the cross missions grow. Through the cross, the church is built. You know, all of our music has to halt. Our buildings, whatever kind of furniture and decor we have, it's all useless now. Whatever multi-purpose facilities we have, they're of no use to us. Whatever staff members we've got doesn't really amount to too much because we're all resulting, uh, resolving to, to using Facebook Live and such things and mediums like uh, pre-recorded sermons. So all the things that we so often depend upon as churches have all been stripped from us. But the one thing that has not been stripped from us and that we can proclaim as clear as ever and as much as ever, and if not more than ever through the means of technology, is the cross of Jesus Christ. It is still there. It still exists. This great doctrine of celebration through Christ and through Christ alone. And so let us not ignore the cross, for to ignore the cross of Jesus Christ is to cease to be useful in God's hands. It is in fact to present another gospel, which is the very thing that Paul criticises the Galatian teachers for doing in the opening words of this book. They're telling the people that circumcision along with faith is what they need. Paul says that's another gospel, not that there is another gospel. 
The cross and the cross alone is what we must boast in. For the cross and the cross alone is the power of God unto salvation. And so if we are to cease and to never be a hindrance to the souls of sinners, if we are to never be a barren fig tree as God's people, well, we must focus on the cross. The coronavirus cannot make us barren before God. But lack of focus on the cross can. Without focus on the cross, we become a lighthouse that has no bulb to shine. But yet Christ has called us the light of the world in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And we are to shine. So what can we boast in? What enables us to shine? Well, Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Not in our possessions. Not in our position. Not in our popularity. All such things have been found wanting and all such things are under threat and they are without value. Only Christ can save. Let us boast in him exclusively by faith alone. I was reading this week of a missionary who was dying And when the missionary was dying, he said these words. He said, ah, there is but one thing needful on a deathbed. And that is to feel one's arms around the cross. Are your arms around the cross? Metaphorically speaking, are you boasting in the cross of Christ? And to answer the question that I opened with, Is there anything left to boast about as COVID-19 spreads throughout our world? Well, yes, there is. The cross of Jesus Christ. So let us boast in that. Let us say with the apostle, but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I too the world. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the cross of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins that it brings. And I pray for the people who are listening to this broadcast that you will help them to glory, to boast, to have confidence in the cross and in nothing else in these days. For your people who are listening, I pray that you would encourage them and refresh them. For anyone listening who doesn't know you, I pray they would put their trust in Jesus Christ and they will find him to be a saviour from sin. Lord, I thank you for the church in Portadown, for their faithfulness to this gospel down through the years. And I pray for them all today that, dear Lord, you'll bless them, that you will encourage them and that the word brought to them this morning and now this evening, that it will be refreshing to them enlightening to them and that it will indeed help them in these difficult days so bless them i pray thinking especially of their elders and their deacons all of their members and adherents lord bless this great congregation and port of baptist i pray for jesus sake amen